Hey, what's up Facebook? Good morning everybody. I hope everybody had a great night's sleep. Uh, for those who actually watched my video last night, thank you. Uh, I know it wasn't the, the usual devotional, but uh, it was another one of my passions. Uh, outdoors living, uh, hiking, camping, stuff like that. Um, so, I've been thinking a lot about uh, where this vlog has been going, and I've been thinking a lot about uh, what have we really been talking about. And I think at the heart of it, uh, people usually look at at, um, at religion as a, as a bad thing, and I completely agree. Uh, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And uh, to be a Christian, you have to, first and foremost, believe uh, the Bible and who Christ is. So I guess that leads to the question, who is Jesus Christ? And a lot of people uh, over the years have looked at him and said that he was just a, uh, just a good man who was trying to do good things. Um, some people called him crazy. Uh, some people called him evil. Um, we look at Jesus as uh, one of three. And uh, for a lot of people, that whole idea of the, the Trinity, uh, of a tri-essenced uh, God, is very difficult. How can Jesus be man and fully God at the same time? Uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of of analogies uh, such as the egg. Um, the egg is uh, the the shell, the yolk, and the other little part at the same time. Uh, and yet, it's even though it's three separate parts, it's still one egg. Um, whether that's a good example or not, I don't. I don't think it really matters. I think what really matters is we look at who is Jesus Christ. And while I'm not going to go into the, the full theological uh, discussion on that, obviously for time, I'm, I'm certainly not going to make a, a 10 day long video and 10 days wouldn't even scratch the surface. Um, I think we have to look at, at who Christ is and I think we need to look at it and say, okay, there is evidence to show who Christ was. Uh, we know from historical evidence, not just biblical evidence, um, as, as a fun fact, I don't look at the Bible as a historical, uh, historical context. Um, while it has historical events in it, uh, a lot of people might look at the Bible and say it was written for a specific purpose, um, and that purpose was to sway people. So... Uh, if you're going to if you're going to try to talk someone into which you can't, by the way, uh, if if you're going to try to share uh, scripture with someone, um, there are ways to do it so that way it makes sense, and it's not just a religious conversation. So when you start to look at the Bible, you start looking at. Uh, how many authors there were. You look at how many authors there were and you look at the amount of time uh, that it took to pen uh, the Bible. Um, and when I say pen the Bible, I mean pen scrolls in which the Bible uh, is made up of. Uh, you look at uh, the earliest uh, recorded writing that we uh, believe is to be Job and you go from there. Uh, we know that uh, Job was uh, likely the first. Uh, we know that Moses was likely the author um, of a few. And then as time goes on, we see, uh, we see the different authors in the Old Testament. And then from there, uh, we move into the New Testament, uh, where there's a 400-year gap in between the Old and New Testament. And then uh, you start seeing the individual writings of, uh, of the apostles, the eyewitness accounts of, of what they were. 
and when you start saying, well, the Bible contradicts itself, well, no, we we would expect some uh, some level of contradiction, or uh, not necessarily a contradiction, just a uh, different aspects that were remembered uh, specifically by different people. If you go into a store, any given store, a convenience store, somebody comes in, robs the place, and you ask five people to tell you what happened, their stories are going to have the same basic narrative, but the facts are going to be slightly different because their perspective, their education, their background, they notice different things that other people may not have. Some things might be the same. Uh, to one person, he was wearing a, a maroon shirt. The other, it was a light red shirt. Uh, uh, some people might say he was six foot tall. Some people might say he was five five. Okay, uh, did the person that say he was six foot tall are they four five? I mean, you you look at you look at what happened. You look at the the basic narrative, and you say the basic narrative is the same. And even if some of the details are slightly different, or uh, or what actually happened is a combination of all the above. Uh, you, you look at these things and you say, okay, anybody who does investigations will tell you that you don't want all the facts to be identical because if all the facts are identical and everybody gives you the exact same facts, the exact same story, the exact same details, it's a planned story because that's not the way the human mind works. We see things a little bit differently. You walk through the woods with two people you're going to get two different accounts uh, because you're not looking at the same thing. You're, you're not trained to see the same thing. Your past, your history teaches you what to pay attention to, and it's going to be slightly different. What we can know for a fact is Jesus lived. Uh, there's record of his life. Uh, Jesus did miracles. Um, even extra biblical accounts say that Jesus Christ did miracles. Um, people that weren't Christian, uh, you look at the works of um, Josephus. Uh, Josephus was not a Christian. Uh, he was a Jew. Uh, he was a Jewish historian, probably uh, the most well-known, respected uh, Jewish historian. I mean, he himself could not refute the idea that Christ had lived. So let's go beyond that. So we know that Christ lived. We know that he died. We know that he was buried. We know that there was a tomb with his name on it. Uh, he went and was put in a tomb. Okay. You look at scripture. Uh, there are different accounts of, of the third day. Uh, and each of those accounts all has the same basic idea. The tomb was empty. The rock was moved. The tomb was empty. And Christ wasn't there. Uh, so you, you start looking at stuff like that and you say, okay, how do we know the tomb was empty? Well, the Romans uh, were very acute killers. They knew how to kill people. That's what they did. So we can assume without a reasonable doubt, uh, with re with, uh, without a reasonable doubt that, that Christ was dead when he came off the cross because they were the Romans. Uh, the fainting, swooning theory, not not going to happen. We know that because of the account in the in the Bible, the blood and water uh, through the lung. So we know that he was dead. Uh, we know that the Romans would not have uh, not killed him um, because of the, who the Romans were. We know that he was put in the tomb. Now here's the interesting fact. We know that women were the ones that found the tomb empty. A little historical context here. If, if you're going to create a religion in that time period, and, and your whole basis is that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, uh, Jesus Christ and the Father were one, as Christ had claimed, then if you really want to sell that and you really want to get people's attention, you don't start with women. You don't start with women because they couldn't even be witnesses in their own trials. Um, women at the time period were essentially property. 
and they didn't have the they didn't have those general rights. Now Christ was a visionary well before his time, which you would understand because he's God. I could see Jesus uh, actually sitting there making tables and chairs, and people were like, "You crazy?" He's like, "No, no, no. These are gonna catch on." Uh, you know, there he's God, so that makes sense. But he went to women first. He went to women. Uh, one, I don't know why. I don't know why he went to women first, but he did, and it's told that way. Not because it was going to help the spread of the gospel, but because it was the truth. That's what happened. That's who Christ decided to go to first. And then you get a little bit further on. And Christ was back for 40 days and had over 500 witnesses. Now here's the thing. Are you going to die for a lie? A lot of people do. Okay. A lot of people do die for their beliefs. They die for what they believe in. But what if you knew that it was a lie? People don't die for what they know is a lie. They die for what they believe in. Now, if you are the apostles and you are there on the ground, you're seeing this, you're, you experience it, are you going to die a gruesome death for that? No. You're going to die for it because you know it to be true. Because you saw it, you witnessed it. We can take that one step further. Look at Saul, Saul of Tarsus. We look at Saul and say, okay, who is Saul? He was, he was a Pharisee, probably one of the, the top Pharisees or, or being groomed to be the top Pharisee. He might have even, uh, if he kept on his trajectory, he may have even uh, been the leader of the Sanhedrin at some point. So he was wealthy, he had power, he had fame, he had a comfortable, uh, comfortable life. Uh, he, he probably had a, a nice house in comparison to a lot of other people. Um, he probably wore some of the nicest clothing uh, of people around. And here's a man who was on a war path to hunt down and kill and destroy uh, followers of the way at the time that it was called, or, or early Christians. And on the road to Damascus, boom, psh, done, stops. Cold turkey. Stops in his tracks, claims that he had a vision from Christ, that Christ came to him on the road of Damascus, and that's it. Saul of Tarsus is gone. Paul is born. Paul, who would go on to uh, lead some of the most heroic and, and risky uh, missionary journeys of all. All of the apostles and yet left behind everything he had for what what did he leave behind a promise a promise that you will suffer in my name and that was a promise given to him and yet he believed what he saw on the road to Damascus so much because of what he experienced because of what he saw because of the truth he left everything else behind and he became Paul. He would he would be beaten, stoned, tossed in with lions, shipwrecked, uh, beaten again, imprisoned some more, um, falsely accused, and then eventually, uh, under the guise of Nero, would be beheaded for a crime he didn't commit. Largely because he was just a a nuisance, and and Nero hated Christians, and this was the time when. Christians were being burned as human candles, and uh, they were being sacrificed in the circus for other people's enjoyment. Um, at any given time, Paul could have said, you know what? <laughs> I made it up. Um, it didn't happen. I want to go back to my life. He didn't do that. He, he died in his convictions, and, and he died knowing who Christ was, and he believed in who Christ was. So even if you, you look at it, the, the entire guise of Christianity is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And, and Jesus Christ uh, is, is one of the trinity of, uh, of Christianity. So when we look at who Jesus is, Jesus was born a baby. He was born of a virgin Mary. He 
was threatened as a child. They fled to Egypt. They stayed in Egypt until he was old enough or until Herod had passed away. He comes back. He starts preaching and teaching at an early age, probably 10 or 12 years old. Uh, and then you see him again sometime later. He's uh, a carpenter like his dad, like his earthly dad. And you see him performing these miracles. And, and these miracles, yes, are found in Scripture, but they're also, like I said, they're, they're found extra biblical as well. So who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is something we cannot fully explain. Jesus Christ lived. He was a real person. We know he was. Uh, we know that he was not in that tomb. We know that over 500 people saw him. And if it wasn't true, then why did the Romans have a hard time squishing this movement? The Romans were unable to stop the truth from spreading. They were unable to rein in the followers of Christ. The Sanhedrin were unable to rein in the followers of Christ. Now, here's the thing. When you even look at Scripture, we know that the 11 apostles who had survived, Judas killed himself, uh, we know that they were hiding, they were afraid, they were scared of the Romans. We know that they hid because they even doubted themselves until Christ's return. When Christ returned, that's when they changed. They were emboldened. They were on fire. And they were willing to die for the Son of God. Are we willing to go the distance for Jesus Christ? What do we believe in? The tomb is empty. Christ lived. Christ died. Christ lives again. Jesus Christ is more than a man. He's more than uh, somebody who teaches good behavior. His blood sacrificed for us. An innocent man who could have at any given time come off the cross, turned everybody into little tiny amoebas, could wipe the world out, uh, forewent the, the temptation from Satan who had the power to give uh, Jesus control. And yet, we see that Jesus had a bigger plan because the Father had a bigger plan for us. Jesus was obedient to the Father. And Jesus said, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through me, the Son. That many will take the, the wide path, the easy path. Few will take the narrow path, the hard path. Who are we? Are we willing to take the harder path, or do we want to just live the easy life and just skate through? Is it worth it? Is it worth the eternal damnation that is promised later? Or is the suffering here because our Savior suffered something that we can maintain and we can continue on? Because we have hope in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of hope. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of love. To sacrifice oneself for the world is love. It is grace. It is mercy. So we know who Jesus is because there's evidence that shows who he is. We can trust in the scriptures because of the time period in which they were written. We can trust in the scriptures because there are uh, some differences in the story. We can trust the chain of custody in which it was uh, written and disseminated. Uh, we, can, we can trust in uh, the dating of those events because we can cross-reference those dates with actual historical events that we know of. We can trust in Scripture because there are extra-biblical accounts of those who were non-Christians who actually corroborated 
the Christian accounts. So we know this because we can we can see, we can reason, and if you actually do the study, uh, the evidence is incontrovertible. So who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the only Son of the Father who came here to live with us, to show us the way to die on the cross, to rise again, to give us eternal hope, in which we lived a life without it. We lived a life in darkness, and Jesus Christ came and broke those chains, so that way we may have hope in God the Father. He was the bridge that crossed the chasm of sin, a chasm that there was no escape from, that we would never be able to cross on our own. He lights the way for us to be able to navigate this life. That way we won't have to navigate this life in darkness, but that we have a lighthouse guiding us home. And this life isn't home. We have Jesus Christ because he gives us the, the hope and the love that we didn't have. So who is Christ? Christ is everything. He is everything because he is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father. So I hope that if you were teeter-tottering on the fence, I hope that if, if you weren't sure or if you're new to this and you don't know who Christ is and you want to know who Christ is, there are people out there who can help you figure out who Christ is. And it's not something you can be talked into. If you can be talked into Jesus Christ, you can be talked out of him. If you can be talked into Christianity, you can be talked out of it. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. It's a relationship with the Father, the creator of the heavens and the universe. That knew me before I was even created who walks with me, who pulls me through the mud, who lifts me up, who guides me, who protects me from the fiery darts of the devil. There are so many ways to learn who Christ is, but you have to open your heart and allow Christ into your heart. Read the Bible. Talk to those who know Christ. Christ is a life changer, a chain breaker, a way maker. Christ is so much more than some carpenter, some Nazarene who made some spectacles and fed some people. He's, he's so much more than that. So if you would like to join me today in uh, following Christ, please let me know, reach out, and together we, we can teach you who Jesus Christ was, who he is, that he's here with you even as we speak, waiting for you with arms wide open, and all you have to do is accept him into your heart. So as you go forward today, try to think about who Christ is. Try to think about what he did for you, what he did for us. And know that he would have died for just you. Because Christ loves you that much. So go forth today. Be safe. Love one another. Spread kindness to one another. And we will all get through this together. Love you guys.